been uh, what what inspired you to write a dogma? Um, it, for me, it, I just wanted to make a flick uh, that celebrated my faith. I wanted to do something that celebrated my faith. Going to church wasn't enough, particularly around the time that I was going to church when I wrote Dogma, because there there didn't seem to be much of a celebration going on. I mean, they call it the celebration of the Mass, but it's not a party in there most times. Most people are just there not out of faith, but because they're terrified of going to hell. So I wanted to do something that, that celebrated my faith publicly and, and also entertainingly as well. You know, I just, it, it, kind of like a psalm, if you will. You know, David so loved God that he used to write psalms. He used to write songs to the guy all the time. And this is kind of like a, a psalm, a two-hour psalm with a lot of dick and fart jokes in it. Right. I mean, you, you brought in a lot of new aspects mm -hmm. where you yourself sort of looking for some innovation in an institution like the Catholic Church, which, mm -hmm. you know, has maybe repeated many things for a long time. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's kind of... Um, a new take that's not that new. It actually just bypasses the um, the organized religious aspect of church and goes right to the heart of, of Christendom, which would be Christ, you know, and kind of espouses the teachings of Christ more than it does the teachings of the church. Yes. Um. But that's why the church formed in the first place, was because of Christ. So really, it's not that revolutionary. It's just adhering to what the first guy said rather than all the other guys that came after him. Right. Um, um, you are um, you're a religious <coughs> person. Do you understand the this criticism that that was brought on by the Catholic League? Yeah, no, not really. I mean, it was kind of confounding to me because the movie is fairly devout. I felt and and very pro faith and very pro God and and I can understand somebody going like, I don't want to see that movie because there's a lot of off color humor in it or a lot of foul language, but I could never understand them coming at it as being anti-Catholic or anti-God. It just didn't make sense to me, and still doesn't. Um, but you have to remember they haven't seen the movie, you know, nor will they ever see the movie. They're just dismissing it out of hand. Right. Um, uh, what about the cast? Was that always from the beginning? Uh, you wrote it actually a few years back, right? <coughs> back in uh, Did you always think of, of uh, Matt Damon and, and Ben Affleck? Um, no, they came along later on. I mean, I wrote it back in 94, and I knew it was always going to be a little more money than, than we'd had um, to do something like Clerks, which is why I waited to do it. Um, people kind of attached themselves along the way. Jason Mewes was in it from the get-go because I'd worked with him in Clerks. Um, ben Affleck came aboard on 95. He read it and really liked it and said he wanted to do it. I said, yeah, well, one day we'll do it together. And it really helped that he became famous later on, became a movie star. Matty came aboard by virtue of uh, his relationship with Ben. Um, Jason Lee came aboard after we worked with him on Mallrats. I always knew that I'd want to use him in the flick, but originally I wanted to cast him as Loki. Mm -hmm. But uh, he had a scheduling conflict and I had to drop out, and then we had Matt come in um, because he had such good chemistry with Ben after being friends for so long. And then those dudes became real famous with Goodwill Hunting. Um, and, and Rock and Linda and Sam and Alan all came after Chasing Amy. So it, it, I, I would um, do subsequent drafts every year since I first wrote the script. And every time someone kind of got attached, mm -hmm. I'd do a dialogue polish on their stuff to kind of match it to their inflections. Mm -hmm. um, I try to do that as, as much as I can. Um, what did you personally want to express with, uh, with Dogma? Um, I, I really wanted to express that um, it's not really important um, about the societal or, or, or kind of political issues that, that organized religions like Catholicism kind of tend to wrap their heads around most off, most Sundays in church. Uh, that's not why we're there. We're not really there to debate um, pro-choice or pro-life issues or, or, or things of that nature. We're there to worship God not and not deal in man's politics. Um, so I, it, so often people fall out of the faith because they fall out of church. They take issue with the church, whether they take issue with the priest himself or just what the church espouses at that particular time in terms of their political manifesto. And then they drop out altogether and drop out of their faith consequently because of it. And the two are not necessarily interchangeable. You know, um, faith and organized religion have always been um, kind of a ten tenuous relationship between the, the two of them at the best. Faith is the basis for all organized religion, but it seems that some organized religions have forgotten that, that it's not about power and, and politics, that it's about God Almighty. And then, so I wanted to make a movie that reminded people that, yeah, it is about God Almighty. It's not about the church. Yeah, yeah. One, one last question. Um, you, you have been in, in all of your movies, actually, along with, um, with, with Jay. This Jason time you are, uh -huh. Yeah, Jason, you are, you are prophets. Right. Um, what, what is actually um, 
uh, the function of it when, when you write this script and um, for me I just wanted to put Jason Mewes in a movie um, I always thought he was a really funny guy so I um, uh, w when I started getting into film I was like I gotta put Mewes in a movie because he really makes me laugh and I want to see if he makes other people laugh as well and he did it really panned out and originally um, in Clerks I had written the role of Randall um, to play myself that's why he's got all the best jokes right mm -hmm. but as we got closer to production I couldn't necessarily um, memorize all that dialogue and work in the stores I was doing at the time and direct at the same time so I bowed out but I at least wanted to be in the movie in case it was the only one we ever made so um, I looked around I was like well Silent Bob is a role that's open and he you know he's supposed to stand next to the J character and do nothing so I jumped in on, uh, and, and just took that role and um, because I like bringing Jason Mewes back, I just kept coming back beside him as well as Silent Bob. Like acting was never really an aspiration of mine, and it's just kind of one of these nice little side things that I get to do um, because of Jay's in the movie. Because I like putting Jay in the movies. Mm -hmm. um, Linda, um, only a human can save humanity. <laughs> That's actually, only a woman mission. can. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, <laughs> probably. <laughs> that's right. So that's um, uh, actually uh, where Bethany comes comes in your character. How how did you want to play her? How do you see the character? Um, I think she's a woman who's trying to redeem herself for maybe having done bad things in her life, and someone who's lost her faith, and she's trying to find her faith again. And so she's asked her to go on this mission to stop the bad angels from getting into a church or the world will end. And so she seeks out the bad angels to stop them because it will redeem her and she'll find her faith again. Yes. Uh -huh. what, what caught your interest in, in Kevin Smith's project in the script? Well, my stepson actually has seen all his, my, I have his 15 year old stepson from a marriage and a uh, previous mm -hmm. marriage and he lives for Kevin Smith movies, and so I got this script, and you know, I wasn't offered the movie, I had to meet and stuff, and, um, but I said, oh, I read this really great script this guy Kevin Smith wrote, he did this good movie called Chasing Amy, and my stepson was like, oh, you have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, all right, I'll try to do it. <laughs> yes, uh -huh. He told me to do Men in Black, though, too, so he was right. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he um, picks all my projects for me now. Yes, it's uh, it's probably interesting to you know to see also. I mean, especially Kevin Smith has many uh, fans that are quite young. You know, mm -hmm. they are probably under twenty-five or so. Mm -hmm. My fans are eight years old now. Oh, the Men in Black. So he's got <laughs> older fans than I do. <laughs> yes, my fans can't go see Dogma because it's rated R. Is it rated R? I, yeah, I guess probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, As if there's a question. <laughs> yes. Is it rated R? <laughs> What what is what is your understanding of the movie? Uh, is it uh, is it a religious movie to you? No, I think it's a satire set against the backdrop of religion, and it has religious ideas in it, but it's not a religious movie, so to speak. Yes. Um, um, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about it, but I think you were brought up uh, Catholic. Mm -hmm. So, um, how did you relate to the to the character? Well, I understood everything in the script because I went to Catholic school all my life, so I, I really I could understand all the references that were made by Kevin. Um, but I I saw it as like an action adventure movie. I mean, I really did. I I, I was you know like a comedy adventure, like *Romancing the Stone*. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was you know I I never saw it as like some you know religious epic or you know. Right. Uh -huh. um, working with uh, Kevin Smith. Um, uh, what was that like? I mean, he directed, and he's in many many of the scenes. What what was that like? I think it was hard for him to have to keep switching hats, and um, but it was great to have him right there, you know, as the writer explaining to you something if you didn't understand. <laughs> what do <laughs> yes. you mean by this? <laughs> so um, that was a good part, and yes. he's he's a great actor. Kevin's a really good actor. Yes. Uh -huh. And he also works actually with this tight group of, of people. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, Matt, yeah, his producer uh, Damon, and, and then then and I think ben, Damon well. yeah, and Jason Muses and you yes. know, all his stuff. And yes. What what was that like for you? You were were you just right into well, I had Alan both? and Chris and Salma. And we're all like the outsiders, so we all had each other. Right. But um, you know, uh -huh. I'm I'm you know I don't I've worked in so many different movies and so many different scenarios that it wasn't that big of a surprise to me. Yeah. But yeah, it was like a bit of a boys' club, but I'm like a boy, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 
um, how did you like prepare for the part? Did you um, talk it through with Kevin mostly, or did you like we, we rehearsed take it from a the lot? Script? Um, but uh, I watched a lot of like old like religious movies that I used to see on TV. I got tapes of you know like, movies I saw growing up because mm. I thought they were funny and like dramatic at the same time. You know, all the, I don't know if you see like those movies, like The King of Kings. Do you see that oh, in Germany? That. No. There are all these movies that come on on Easter Sunday and yes. they're about, you know, the crucifixion <laughs> <laughs> and um, the resurrection. You know, they're just all these like Catholic movies and mm. they're really kind of funny to watch. You know, when you're a kid, you just, you're in awe of them because you believe it all. Mm. And then when, as an adult, you look, you look at them and you just think, that's, that's so bad. These movies are so bad. <laughs> Uh, ben, um, the the story of um, Dogma is uh, quite different from the previous movies that you did with Kevin uh, Smith. Uh, what what attracted you to to the story? Well, what attracted me to it initially was how uh, that I felt it was very original in the sense that it was not uh, so many movies tend to become homogenized and similar and repetitive. What's uh, um, and I felt like you know. This was original, fresh, different, and and struck me. And also just very creative, very interesting. A story well told and an interesting story at that. And ultimately, it's I sort of tend to go by just the visceral reaction I get. You know, you can't really explain why you like something. You just do. It's like a, a piece of art or an essay. I mean, there are ways you could analyze it and break it down, but ultimately it's just sort of whether it... Uh, you know, reflects off that part of you that's sensitive to feeling things in, in, in such a way as to, you know, resonate. And uh, it did. So I, yes. I thought yeah. no further and wanted yeah. to do it. Yeah, yeah, it's certainly uh, very funny, you know. Yeah. Do you understand uh, um, all the, you know, protests from the Catholic League? Uh, well, the Catholic uh, League, for one thing, you have to understand, <clears throat> it's, not the, it's not the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is a worldwide organization that's, you know, billions of, or millions of <coughs> members strong. There may be a, bi a billion Catholics in the world, but, you know, the Church is a quite a large organized religion. The Church has no position on this movie, and I think understands that it's just a farce and a comedy, and ra frankly, beneath the attention of the Catholic Church, wisely understands it has m more important things to attend to. The Catholic League is like three guys in their basement in Iowa. And they call themselves the Catholic League, and it's a couple of chumps who, who, who like, you know, they're not having any fun, and they, so they don't want anyone else to, you know. Yeah. And that, it's just an effort to sort of get themselves like some attention, and you know, nobody crowned these guys representatives of Catholics or of anyone else. You yeah. know, they're just sort of self-pronounced. But because initially it was Disney, you know, made for a good story, they uh, purport, purport, purport to speak on behalf of all Catholics. Um, uh, they don't speak on my behalf. They don't speak on behalf of many of the Catholics uh, whom I know. So I'm not sure on whose behalf they are speaking, but it's really just a frivolous and I think kind of um, bold-facedly political effort to get themselves a little bit more juice and raise some more money. Yes. Uh, is it? Do you see it as a religious movie? Uh, ultimately, yeah. In, in in the spirit in which it's intended, which is quite light, fun, irreverent. Uh, and um, idiosyncratic. It is a, a ultimately a pro-faith movie, a pro-spirituality movie. In other words, it doesn't suggest that spirituality or belief in God is in any way destructive. It suggests that the struggle with faith can be difficult, and it suggests that uh, that the manifestation of spiritual beliefs in organizations can sometimes be destructive, but that ultimately uh, faith and love and the Christian doctrine is a good one. Right. Uh -huh. um, can you talk about uh, Bartleby, your character? Um, uh, you are actually fallen angels, um, Loki and uh, mm -hmm. Bartleby. Yeah, he's uh, he, Loki and, 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 and Bartleby um, were, were the angels of death. They carried out God's sort of wrath against you know, the Sodomites, for example. And eventually they grew weary of smiting humans in the name of, of, of uh, a code of conduct they considered too, too severe. And so they, um, they quit and became conscientious objectors. And God, as punishment, banished them to a small rural state in north, northern United States called Wisconsin. 
um, which is, I'm sure you have an equivalent uh, in Germany. It's probably Austria. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I know it's yeah. a country, but you know what I'm saying. Uh -huh. Wherever Arnold Schwarzenegger is from, I hear that's very boring and farmlandy. That's um, right. There's yeah. the same kind of Wisconsin yes, over there, yeah, yes. So, uh, and so that's as punishment, but then, we, then I discover that the, through a loophole <clears throat> in Catholic dogma, there may be a way for us to return to heaven. And, um, and so we set about trying to do that. And then uh, the voice of God appears to this woman uh, in her bedroom and charges her with a holy mission to stop us. And there begins our uh, adventure. Right. Uh -huh. um, Goodwill Hunting certainly opened doors for you. And you did some big budget movies, but you also have remained um, faithful to the, to the independent course. Um, why do you look for this balance? Yeah, it's funny because I, I, you'd think it would be more, I would think that that would be more common, but not a lot of people do it, and I'm not sure why. Maybe they just want to make a lot of money as much as they can. I mean, um, you know, there's plenty of, of, of money to be had in movies. Um, I just like to do movies that I want to do. I, I can pay the rent, I have some money, so I don't have to worry and do jobs for money. Um, so I get, I'm afforded the real luxury of doing stuff that I believe in and like. And this movie, you know, is a good example of that. Something that I thought would be really good and fun, you know, no money, but it, but a great, neat little movie that I could be proud of. And, um, you know, I suppose the drawback is if, if this movie is too edgy to do the kind of business that, you know, Armageddon does, then maybe they'll say, well, I don't know, he ha you know, if we should pay him X amount of money because his last movie... Uh, didn't do what Armageddon did. You know, it's an inexact science at best yeah. anyway, and frankly, I think you're better off erring on the side of your own taste rather than just trying to pick commercial movies. Right. Uh -huh. what, what are your priorities at the, uh, at the moment? Um, writing, acting, looking maybe for, um, uh, for a girlfriend, for relationships? <laughs> There's also that right side. I tend to be more work-oriented, uh, and I haven't had too much time to devote to relationships um, this year. and. Uh, uh, writing and acting and ostensibly maybe directing something, but uh, right now it's mostly work. Yes. Selma, um, I, I can't really think of so many movies um, that, that deal with, um, with religion. Why did you want to do Kevin Smith's um, Dogma? What, what interest did it you It had nothing to do with religion, the reason why I wanted to make this film. I wanted to make this film because it had very witty dialogue, very, very clever. Because it was a smart film, it had interesting concepts, uh, intriguing ones. It also had very colorful characters. And mostly because it was incredibly original and they're hard to come across. That's right. Um, can, can you talk about uh, Serambidity, uh, your character? Uh, what what is she like, and why well, did you want to play her? Serendipity is a muse, and uh, she's a muse in crisis because she feels that she has been taken for granted. She she feels that she's inspired all these great artists of the world, and that they have, you know, fame and respect and love, and she has no recognition. She has nothing. Nobody thinks about her, nobody gives her credit for it, and she thinks it's terribly unfair because in her mind it would be nothing without her. So she decides to come to God and ask her to give her the opportunity to come to Earth as a human to try fame and fortune. Well, not as a human, as a muse, but she disguises herself as a human. So she can try her own fame and fortune as a writer. But you know, she gets here and things don't go as smooth as she planned. And uh, it's a little bit of a disaster because she gets writer's block. And um, things don't go too well on Earth. But somehow she gets involved in this celestial mission to save the world. So uh, after all, it, it's worth it for her. Yes. Uh, what, what is the character based on? It's um, in Greek mythology, right? Actually, I did my research. She doesn't exist in, in mm -hmm. Greek. There are nine muses. You know, they all specialize in different fields. None of them are called serendipity. What the author did, she, he decided to create serendipity as a muse that represents all the muses. He gave her this name, and in a way, she 
the movie is a serendipity. You know, yes. you, you go and you think it's one thing and something else right. turns out. Uh, oh, that's <gasps> I didn't know that. <laughs> um, uh, was it easy for you to relate to the character? To was that always your first choice? You yes, yes. Uh, in many ways, first of all, it's a lot of fun to play a character that's bigger than that, bigger than life. That it's not actually human. Uh, second of all, she says a lot of things that are wonderful concepts. For example, my favorite one is that she reveals that in this movie, God is a woman. And I love that because we, we all know that God is not a man or a woman. God is God. However, in an attempt for us to relate to God, we have visualized him as a male, as a human male, because we can relate to him better that way. Why a male? Why not a female? It's neither one of us, but if we're going to pick a sex to, to visualize him on, why does it have to be a man? It should be a woman. It makes more sense. Yeah. Because a woman represents the creation, the mother, the one that gives life. And that's what God represents. So it makes a lot more sense if God was a woman. Yeah. So I love that, that um, she's the first one to reveal this in the film. Yes. Uh -huh. Do you, uh, oh, just one last question. <laughs> Do you sometimes think? From your, um, um, like, what do you bring from your Mexican culture to uh, to American movies? I can can you think bring, of that? I can only bring who I am. Whatever it did to me, that's what I can bring. And that's why I think I can just play anybody. Because I am in touch with who I am and what my roots are. But I don't have to play Mexican. I just have to bring whatever that gave to me, and I can just give it to any, any character. Because yes. you as a, as a German and me as a Mexican, yes, you're German and Mexican, but we're both women. And right. we share conflicts together. Yes. You know, that we have both gone through. And we could understand each other in that your experience might be different than mine, but that's what makes it interesting. Uh -huh. And it doesn't have to be local. You just have it in you. Right. Uh -huh.